welcome to the Metal Voice M3 with a Aldenova. Montrealer, Aldenova. Aldenova, a Canadian, not only a Canadian, but a Grammy Award winning. An Italian Canadian <laughs> An from, Ita from Quebec that speaks French. Yeah, bonjour. Ça va bien? <laughs> and, it, and fluently Italian. Oh yeah, fluently Italian. Bonne soirée à tous les monde. <laughs> Aldo, you know, I, I, I just saw your set at M3 and I have to say you guys were on fire. Ah, thank you. Just tell me a little bit about so the band. We didn't, play, we didn't play well, but we were on fire. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about your band. My band? Uh, <clears throat> we've been together now since 2022. And it's Jack Frost on guitar from, uh, from New Jersey. Uh, he was in a bunch of big bands like Sabotage, something like that. Darius Sexus uh, on bass. Uh, he's from San Diego, and, but he's from Brazil. He's a Brazilian. And, and then I've got on keyboards uh, Michael T. Ross from Las Vegas. And he's in the um, Raid the Rock Vault, Raid the Rock Vault review. Mm -hmm. He's a musical director there. I've got Angie Kershaw from, from Montreal on drums. Mm -hmm. And then I've got me on, you know, during, jokes. During the jokes. rest jokes and uh, MC I guess you know let me ask you what can fans expect you've been doing a lot of shows lately you're yeah. back Aldenova is back folks Aldenova is back what can people expect to see in terms of a set list in the next you know in your next sort of run of shows well we do a lot of a lot of the songs from my first album because that's you know you know we, we aim to please and you know, that's the people really want to come to hear and the fact that I haven't, my voice hasn't changed like uh, at all. That's true. Since you know, even at my age, I sound like I'm 22. And that's probably you know, my balls have been dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I don't know. So uh, what do you expect in the such uh, in the set? Let's say in the 75 minute set, we'll do this is our set. We play Modern World from Blood on the Bricks. We we'll play Monkey on Your Back from Subject. Then we'll do Under the Gun and Fool Yourself from the, uh, uh, from the first album. Then we'll do Ball and Chain from the first album. We'll do Paradise from Subject. Then after that we do Bitch and Black from Eddie Gage. Mm -hmm. Then Bang Bang from uh, Blood on the Bricks. Then we do again two songs from the first album, Hot Love and Heart to Heart. Then we do Blood on the Bricks from from, uh, I mean, we do Blood on the Bricks from Blood on the, the Bricks. Bricks. Exactly. Wow. That's a no-brainer. And, uh, and then we do Fantasy. Okay, yeah. You know, I, I saw your set. So know. that was exactly the set. So I might, <laughs> next time you come and see me, I'll change it completely and it won't be that. So, <laughs> so okay. Uh, your last album was a concept album. You put, it, you put it out as a one album instead of a two CD sort of set. Right. Are you planning on releasing the whole rock opera? I don't know if you want to call it a rock opera, but yeah, the concept? A, it, is a, it, is a, it is a rock opera, but that's the reason why I'm not putting it out. Is that after listening to it, I was trying to make, a, a, so let's say, songs that I could play live from it. And I couldn't really, the songs themselves, when they flow, they were made to flow with the story and everything, and the songs are great. The musicianship is great, the melodies are great, everything is great. But if you pull one song out, it doesn't work. So you have to put it out as a whole. So now it, we're doing a uh, staging it. Okay. We're gonna put it out as a stage production rather than Wow. Like, yeah. And wh wh when is that gonna come to fruition? I have no clue. <laughs> so you're still working on it? It's I'm working work on it, yeah. It's like, you know, it's an expensive proposition. That's the least, you know, the, at least I have something between Cirque Soleil and something like that with a big thing and um, it'll take time I'll find the right I'll find the right people with uh, what about like a live album a DVD well I've already what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm working on a songs for uh, my next album which will be pretty much like my first album it'll just be like you know 10 hits it'll be 10 songs that you know, have one consistent theme it won't be like like Eddie Gage which is all over the place it's not all over the place Eddie Gage, like I said, it's a 25-piece rock opera. It works, but um, this new album has more. Uh, it's not. It's just like the first album. It's just one hit after the other. But with the theme, it was like this is one artist and he's doing 
Yeah. Is it done or is it you're still at work? I'm on still it? at about the sixth song. I mean, like oh, yeah. 15 songs on it. Yeah. Okay, good. There's some killers. So. I mean, killers. Some songs sound more closer to Ramstein than they do. Really? It's Ramstein meets Aldo Nova. Some of the, me and my wife's favorite band is Ramstein. I love Ramstein too. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's band. like Ramstein 24 7 at my house. You're not going to sing like, uh, what's like, his name? No, Till Lindemann. Till Lindemann. No, 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 no. The no. Moss. And yeah. you're not going to sing in French or Italian or just English? Okay. No, no, no. All right. So I, I'm going to ask you about this, and you can answer as much as you want. I watched the Bon Jovi documentary. And I got to say, after knowing you for a while and talking with you a lot, you know, and knowing your history and growing up in that era when Bon Jovi started, you know, breaking out, I was kind of a little disappointed. Why? I was disappointed because I knew sort of like the backstory of everything and I found that it was kind of like tossed aside. I go, wasn't Aldo sort of involved in the early year, er, early days of Bon Jovi, you know, kind of give him a little hand? Oh, yeah. And nothing oh, yeah. mentioned. Nothing mentioned. And even when Blaze of Glory came out, and Don Bon Jovi spoke about it in his documentary, nothing was mentioned. And I always thought you guys had like this partnership, this writing, mutual, or friendship. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know, for me, I'm just telling you as a fan, I, you know, I love Bon Jovi, I love Aldo Nova, and I just found that, I don't know, that was, uh, just maybe even a mention would have been nice. Well, yeah, I guess so, but he didn't even mention Tony Bon Jovi. He just said, my cousin had a studio. And if it wasn't for Tony, he wouldn't have had a career. I mean, Tony's the one who called all his musicians, like Roy Bitton, myself, Tim Pierce, Louis McDonald, that was his first session. And otherwise, they wouldn't have come for John Bon Jovi. I mean, Runaway didn't exist. So after that, then the radio station started playing it. Let me ask you this, just to clear the history, right? To, to just set it straight. He's in the studio, Bon Jovi's in the studio, recording the demo of Runaway, right? At what point did you sort of like help him out, I guess? Well, it wasn't, like I said, when I was, when I was at the power station mixing my album in like 1981, uh, John was only, uh, he made coffee, swept the floors, and contrary to whatever he wants to say, that's what he did. And I was mixing in Studio A at the power station. The coffee machine was right there, and I was there. So I take him out, I see him, he looked like a great kid. So I brought him in to play in fantasy and all that stuff. And after when he wanted to record Runaway, and then Tony put us all together. You know, I had worked with Tony Bon Jovi, and Tony had worked with Roy Bitton, and he worked with everybody there. And he asked for a favor. So you, you helped not only with Runaway, but with, uh, you know, the other songs on the album, correct? Yeah, I mean, we had done, I did Blaze of Glory, that's pretty much, I mean, I wrote that lick, and, I mean, it, it was the, whole, the whole record of Blaze of Glory, that was pretty much all me. Uh, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't him, but I wasn't, it wasn't uh, Danny Korshmar in the least, you know what I mean? But, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm still making music, you know, I'm and, and I don't want to dwell on it either. No, I just I, want to say that as I, a fan, as a fan, I was kind of disappointed. And I could say that as a fan, yeah. right? So I'm making music and he's making one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else you got planning going on? What, what else are you doing? Well, we're going to keep touring. Like I said, I've got my album. We're going to keep touring and just going to keep at it until people watch you, you know, take notice. All right. And I, like, I mean, you know, it's like people go, well... We don't know what he sounds like, I and mean, he might be, might be bald, he might be fat, he might be not be able to play, he might not be able to sing. I mean, you know, that happens to the best of them. Bon Jovi, unfortunately, you know, in April of 2023, he went out for a month, and it was like a catastrophe. So, uh, yeah, I'm lucky, I'm blessed. You I'm know, happy, I'm, well, I'm happily married. Yeah, and yeah, your wife's very nice um, and very supportive. Nice. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he's got to say. So let me let me say something. He comes here with like two flip phones turning on, and he says, "Oh, this is going to be a great shoot. This, you're going to look good." And so you are. Oh yeah. Flip, flip, flip phones today. You're good. The only reason it's going to look good is the only reason it's going to look good because I'm handsome. Oh. Apart from that, you won't get anything. Out so of we it. have this history of him <laughs> insulting me constantly, just so everybody knows. Oh yeah. And he enjoys it. I love and it. He enjoys it. Uh, I had another question for you, but now I don't remember. Oh well, I diverted the question. That I oh, this is what I wanted to say. So we're watching your set backstage, and I can see all the artists 
from all the bands that are performing today, well, there's Alda Nova. They're all watching you. They're all watching you, and they're all curious. So, I mean, not only are you a legend, in, but you're a legend to the world, right? And to all the artists. And well, the thing is, my record came out in 1982, and like just 70s. And then after that, there's the hair bands. And in 1982, there was pretty much I set a standard, which was like the rock guitars, stacked vocals, the keyboard, and then blend them all together. And after that, there's the phase where everybody did that, even Runaway. I mean, that's the basic formula of what it is. Well, I always, I've always said this, and I probably said this to you. Alda Nova was the blueprint of what was to come with yeah. that sound. And of course, the rock of uh, Bon Jovi or his music. Yeah, I, I mean it's pretty much it. You know, but uh, between 1982, there was you know my record was up there with Journey's Escape. I mean it was like it was you know I still it's a classic album. Yeah. I mean you know Are You High Line Fidelity, Journey Had Escape, and there was my album was like there, and everybody knows that. Yeah. Although only five people bought it, I mean that's like. Yeah. They love that picture. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Anyways, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure okay, to finally sitting down with you. I mean, we've done interviews in the past, but to sit down with you and talk to you and watch you perform, to meet your wife in person, it was thank a, it's, it's a it was a pleasure, buddy. Thank you yeah. so much.